What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, Brandy. It's your boy, Russell the Four. And we are back with another episode of the What They Never Told Us podcast. <laughs> what up, dude? Not only are we back for a, another episode, <clears throat> we are back for the official, like, final recording for this uh, season. So... Thank you for rocking with us thus far. We appreciate everybody that has come along the journey, all the new people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We reached a few milestones this season um, and met a few goals that we have for ourselves. So I'm very proud of what we've accomplished this season. Absolutely. A couple milestones. Ooh, yo, we always shout out Africa because Africa has been rocking with us since season one, but we just hit a milestone because we charted in Jamaica. We did. In the relationships category. In three different categories in Jamaica, actually. So Man. that was huge. So all the people listening and tuning in from Jamaica, what's up? We plan on coming to visit you very, very soon. I was about to try and do your accent, but I'm not going to butcher it. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. Don't do that. But we are definitely planning a lot of new endeavors and one of them is like group trips so jamaica should definitely be on our list mm, definitely what, should be what they never told us about jamaica i've been russell hasn't been so yeah i don't know if i want to experience that with other people <laughs> we go i don't know if my first time we gotta I go, go first and test it out and then we we'll go back yeah with i don't know if i want the first time i go to jamaica to be with a bunch of people <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, we're excited. Um, just a shameless plug that there will be 13 official episodes this season. Uh, episode 13 is going to be a live episode that we do on Facebook. So if you have any questions, any comments about the season, uh, burning relationship advice that you need, write us, tweet us, text us. Absolutely. Inbox us. <laughs> we'll plan on discussing it live on the air next week. Absolutely. So you'll see more about that. We'll be posting about that all this week. Hopefully you've already seen the post. If not, go to the What They Never Told Us page. Hit us up there on Facebook. You can hit us up on email. Um, you can hit us up on any one of our personal socials. We've got a couple questions already in the it's looking like it's going to be an interesting conversation. So <laughs> shout out to y'all that have been proactive and uh, have been shooting us those questions. I cannot wait to have that conversation. I also can't wait. This is, I always get this itch towards the end of this season um, to like explore some of the other passions that we have that have kind of just been kind of dormant. <clears throat> As y'all know, Brandy's um, a business owner, People are even now asking, so do you still... Do you still bake? Listen, like I'm busy, but I do <laughs> bake, y'all. I promise I'm going to be back. <laughs> that part. I haven't been in a music studio in a very long time. I'm starting to get that itch again. I don't know if it was this past live, but Last one of the lives we did, but um, I ended up playing one of my unfinished songs, and I was like, man, I just let this mug sleep and slumber, so I'm anxious to get back and finish that up. Um, I don't know if I was ready to announce this, but I think I'm gonna announce it. I am. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I was ready. Do it officially. Huh? Just say you got something in the works. Got something in the works. It's other stuff in the works. Um, that I'm excited about. But how do you feel about that? Like we've been now for the last two years doing a lot of things together, right? Like. A lot of ventures, this podcast, videos, food reviews, a YouTube channel, all of these things, public appearances, hosting award shows. <laughs> it's a lot. It's been, it we've a been lot. busy. It's a lot to just even think about. Um, so what, how do I feel about what? What was the question? Doing things separately. The other day when we was in Nashville, the other day when we was in Nashville, I was out with the homies. And you sound like you being out in the bar without me. <laughs> Does that translate to like uh, doing No, this? I think like I definitely got used to you being like my travel companion, right? So if we're in new places and we're exploring new things, like I want to do that together. Like don't be going and having fun without me in a new place. One time I went live from here. You ain't like that either. I didn't. See, I'm I didn't, but the I'm people didn't like piece. it either. They was like, we're Brandy. 
one person <laughs> said wear Brandy. It was multiple people. Ain't nobody dislike nothing but you. People. But see, this is further cementing my theory that maybe this might not be a smooth transition into separate ventures. No, I think that like. <laughs> I feel like the way you're painting it is like, we're just not going to see each other. Like as long as we have our together time, like I'm good, but there's just stuff that I realize that you're just not interested in and vice versa that I'm really itching to go do. And I want to be able to have the freedom and have the space to do that. So um, I'm okay with that. You come home to me every night and you text me a million times throughout the day. So we'll see. Be good. We'll see. I'm going to put a pin in this. <laughs> <laughs> If I want to be somewhere with you, like, I'll just come. Not be somewhere with me doing things separately. Like, there is, not with us. I'm Now I'm advancing conversation. I want you to think I'm talking about us. Okay. You're like, that ain't even a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but there is sometimes a competitive nature that lives within uh, couples, friendships, um, especially, like, when you do things together. Like, um, like I remember one time you asked me, um, would it bother you if like I was more popular than you? And I said, huh? And you was like, yeah, like, um, I can't remember. I think we were doing a live. I can't remember what we were doing. No, that was just a conversation that we had. No, no, but other. it came from, we were doing something to get on live and I was it like. It came from my TikTok blowing up. Yeah, I think that was it. Mm -hmm. But regardless, I remember that question. Mm -hmm. And um that is a realistic thing that people deal with, right? Where like um, you're in a relationship with somebody, it could even be a friendship, right? But then they start to advance in a field, in a capacity, in an area. And sometimes the person that you're in a relationship with, they wrestle with feelings sometimes about that. Like That's a real thing that exists with people. Yeah, 100%. Um, I don't think, like, so it, it has to be, I think it has to be, well, for me at least, I'm going to say, it has to be a field in which, like, I'm, like, if you started baking something and people are like, oh my God, this is so dope, and everybody's now coming to you for baking stuff, I would probably feel away. I'm not going to lie. But really? if you go and <laughs> succeed in music, like, that's your thing. Like, for sure. I, I'd be so happy for you because I know that's a passion of yours and I know that's something that you really want to see fulfilled in your time here on the earth. So, like, Go do that. But if you start encroaching on my territory, yeah, I might have a problem. Your territory. <laughs> I'm a little issue. I'm about to learn how to bake just to see what you, how you react. <laughs> Babe, try this cookie. <laughs> nah, um, it's an interesting conversation. We were, we attend a marriage ministry class at our church. And uh, we went to one last night, which are always dope. They always lead to good conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, I really enjoy going to those. But one particular point they hit on, um, was this like balance between uh, the time you spend outside of the relationship, activities with friends, uh, interests that you participate in uh, versus the time that you spend with your spouse or your significant other. And it led to an interesting conversation. There was a couple next to us that got a little tense. I was joking with him today. I said, Fave, a little tense. He was like, yeah, man, you hear me? She was coming at me a little bit. I said, hey, man, I wasn't trying to be in your business. Y'all was just kind of loud. <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's it awakened me to an issue that I don't think I was aware of. I've never dealt with that. I mean, I think the benefit of it, at least in our relationship, is neither one of us have a lot of friends. So, like, <laughs> We don't, I mean, we have friends that we like talk to or whatever, but we don't really hang out with them. I definitely don't hang out. I present really social. I swear I'm not. I am my homebody. I will stay in the crib every day if you let me. I went to an event without you yesterday and they were like trying to get everybody together and I was like hanging off to the side and somebody said, why are you acting like you shy? I'm like, I like, I am, I'm not shy, but I'm super reserved. Like, I don't like being with the crowd. Like, I want to pop in, pop out, you know, get a little snack. And then I need to go on by my way. Like, I, I'm not a hangout girl. I did that a ton in my that. late teens and early 20s. So now, I'm like, that's not my thing. So I don't, I don't see it being an issue for us, but I have seen it go really bad. Like, really bad. Because, um there's this like sense of independence that I think, especially like if you come into a relationship being like a single parent before you, you get used to a certain lifestyle. And for whatever reason, there's this stigma that you lose that when you get married. Mm. And I do think that also independence in a relationship is equated with singleness. And it's like, I don't want to 
be single. I just want to be independent. And for me, being in a relationship with somebody that does have such a large personality. Um, and I think that the space that we have been successful in thus far is l a large majority, quote unquote, your thing. Like for me, I need to go find my thing. Mm. Um, I know that that's baking, but there are just other passions that I have inside of me that are important that I see come to fruition outside of our relationship. And it doesn't mean that our relationship lacks anything, but I just need fulfillment in all areas. Like I have it in this area. Now there are some other areas that I need to go find fulfillment in. And sometimes that might take me away um it, i might be extra busy and there's less time for us so it's just about finding that balance That's real. same as you like being in the studio till three o'clock in the morning i mean it's not ideal but i understand yeah. so it's not a point where i'm like oh well why was you out you know what i'm saying because i get it yeah and i get that that's a huge part of you yeah i um you're the first woman i've been with that has been very much so like um determined to maintain this like independence yeah i don't want to be known as russell's wife that's just not a oh, that's whack it, it's not whack no nah, i gotta I cancel my brandy's <laughs> husband shirts i ordered yeah no <laughs> uh, hey yo let me cancel that <laughs> so for me and we've talked about this but my ex-husband in the town that we live in is a, I mean, most people know his name. You know what I'm saying? Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> most people know his name. And I would, go, I would go a lot of places or be introduced to people as DP's wife. It's like, nah, I'm Brandy. Hey, how you doing? Like, I got a whole personality and <laughs> I am somebody. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> I'm not just and then when I got divorced I told you I felt like I lost that and in the meantime like I had a son who was now being in high school he was being more popular so then it was like oh that's Michael mom like nah yo got a name it's okay you're not gonna be known by everybody and most of the time they, I don't need to be known they'll by attach you to somebody but I think it's just important for me to have a sense of identity where like if I go in a room I'm just not Russell's wife. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> As Russell Davis the fourth, uh, I have four generations of my family has yeah. not had their own name. My dad in this small town is a professional football player who's still very famous at U of M. So you get it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, not this. I don't think I feel upset. Like when people are like, yo, that's Russell Davis's son. Oh, or no, like, upset. or like, I think I get the idea that I'm going to be an individual. Yes. And I get that. I, mm -hmm. I understand this is what you're saying. I get that wholeheartedly. Um, but, and let me know how you feel about this. Mm -hmm. Like, does it ever make you like, um, because I would imagine if for some reason, like, I find individual success mm -hmm. outside of our joint ventures, that that would magnify that. And I don't ever want you to be like. Uh, it would if I was just not doing anything. I mean, you but could be doing never, a lot of things, but that doesn't mean that I don't it need would. To be, I don't need to be successful. I need to be fulfilled. And if So you I, feel like you're. Like angst, not angst, that's such a strong, the <laughs> strong word, a strong language, but your uneasiness with being known as Russell's wife or anybody's just wife comes more from you not being fulfilled rather than you not being known. Cor correct. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to be known. I don't want to be famous. You know that about me. That's not like a itch. Like, oh, I want to be Beyonce. No, like. Mm -mm. You definitely want to be Beyonce. I want to be her friend. Yeah, I not, don't want to be her. Because I've definitely let's, seen you do whole routines. Be, you I you got be, one more time to watch On the Run Tour and do the whole choreography through. A backup dancer. <laughs> hey, B. What up, girl? If you watching this. <laughs> um, a best friend. You definitely want to be B. Well, choreographer, but I don't want to be Beyonce. When you came to my show and I did that Jay-Z song, you lit up. You was like, I can't get. I saw you in that corner doing Lies. <laughs> choreography you ain't slick <laughs> i don't want to be Beyonce, but yeah for me it's about like when i 
I think when I felt that in my previous relationship, I wasn't doing anything that I was searching, right? Yeah. For some sort of identity, some sort of ind- independence. Um, and I didn't have it. So then when you go in a room or you meet somebody new and it's like, oh, this is just. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. Like, <laughs> it doesn't feel good at all. Like, the only thing that I've accomplished is being his wife. That kind of sucks. And I don't want to feel like that. For sure. I so get that's that 100%. What I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious how, what does independence look for you at this phase of your life? You're the, f- I think I was about to say this. Yeah. You're the first a woman that I've been with that is like determined to be I ain't determined to be, but you it's important to you that you have your own stuff. Mm-hmm. And most of my adult relationships are like women who like, you know, they work and do things, but they don't have like any big interests. Mm. And that's weird. Well, they might have interests, <laughs> but like you know pursuing like yeah. big dreams uh-huh. is a very thing. And not everybody's pursuing a big dream. Right. Some people are like going to work, yeah. they're living lives, but and they found fulfillment in that. They yeah. found fulfillment in that. But like me and you both have lofty goals that we came into this relationship with. Mm-hmm. Right. So me and I think um the shadow I kind of cast with my personality mm-hmm. and um the way I enter a room just but kind of became a thing. I got used to being a certain person in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So I've had to wrestle with the fact of like. I'm crazier than you. Yes, go ahead and say it. You can admit it. It's okay. I'm not. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thought I was trying to deny that? You did a little prank. No, nah, I was like. Well, no, I just I'm had a sure flashback of some of the stuff you've just done. <laughs> I was like, well, who is this woman? I ain't denying that you are outside of your mind. What? Period. I'm not crazy. I'm just <laughs> I'm funny. You crazy. That's different. <laughs> nah, you 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 hilarious. But you definitely have a big personality, and you match my energy in that regard. Mm-hmm. And I, I I wrestle with it. Truth moment. I wrestle with it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm working on. God's working on me. I mean, I figured out because nothing's happening. That's my stuff. I gotta <laughs> I gotta work through it. But I'm used to be the one cracking jokes, people laughing, and then you be like, Haha, but what about this? And everybody like, Haha, I'm like. Yeah, it was she a, stole my it was, thunder. It was an actual. I think I felt it when it w- became an actual debate. Like, who's the funny one? Like, you definitely felt slighted when you people said me. I, I I hope you don't think I was taking that seriously. You did. She's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. You're not funny. I'm funny. Right, we're not gonna go there. <laughs> anyway, so shows this name of this uh, episode is who's funny, and that's literally what this episode is about. <laughs> um. So you were asking me of what independence looked like for me. What does it mean for you what is it? in a relationship? To me, it means I have the space to pursue my wi- my wishes, my dreams, my goals without you feeling attacked or less than by or intimidated mm-hmm. by the dreams that I have for myself that don't include you. For sure. Like for me, if everything that we did, every goal every business opportunity that we saw was a together thing I don't think I would be as fulfilled because I know that I don't ever want to pull you into something just because you're my husband like I know that there's stuff that just really interests me and that you would do it because you want to support me but like I want to be able to know that like yo you want to write a book and it's about being a single mom and overcoming obstacles and it don't have nothing to do with me. And I'm just here to cheer you on. Like, that's dope to me. That's what I need to feel like, yo, you're. it's okay for you to be Brandy however you need to be Brandy without me feeling intimidated by that. Because like you said, I do have a big personality. Mm-hmm. And I, if you can't handle that, if you can't support me in me being fully me, like, I... That would be that would be a huge obstacle for us. We already married, so it's kind of too late. It ain't. <laughs> People no, deal with this all the time. Like, I don't. I don't think it's an issue for me. Yeah, I mean, I don't want it to be an issue for it you. Won't, but it won't be an issue for me. Like I yeah. fight to be supportive for you. I think it's true. You're so determined to be independent that I rarely have room to be supportive. It's true. I mean, yeah. not mm, not supportive, but. Input, yeah, that's true. Not even input, but like just like help, helping you. You can be supportive. You barely let me help you do things around the house. Like if you're doing something, 
like reaching for something that's way taller than you, you just now are starting to be like, hey, babe, can you help? Like, I watched you today. That's you was headed toward the corner. That's just habit, honestly. It's just habit. Like, I'm just not used to having nobody around. I'm so not, I'm not that's a cop out. It's not. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where to. Right it's now. a habit, but but it that comes from somewhere. It's not just yeah. yeah it comes a, from the fact that I haven't had nobody help me do it. <laughs> so, so if I see something that needs to be done, I, it's just instinctual. So to even, go do it. Yeah, maybe you're not thinking about. It, but then when the person says, "Hey, let me help," and it's like, "No, nah, I got it." <laughs> that's not a habit. That's just I can do it. Okay, but I think for <laughs> me, and I I don't know if other people can relate to this, but it. There's like the stigma that like we women can't do anything without y'all, right? And just because you're here doesn't necessarily mean that I always need you to do it for me. Like I am still very capable, like taking out the trash or so whatever. It's internal it's like, stuff, yeah. Like I you- know it's just like I know I can ask you and I will ask you, but I can also do it myself. Like I don't just because it's a manly duty or if it's too high and I need to get a chair. But Doesn't mean I can just I, I want to ask you to get so up off you the would, couch and come over to help me when I can just get a chair and get it. I'm not helpless. It's not I'm a, short. It's not helpless. It's, a it's just like you guys have like I'm sure if I put my mind to it, I could find a way to do a lot of the th- matter of fact, before you came to my life, there were things that I did for myself. Yeah. But now that you're in my life. I don't turn away the help of things that you might be able to do easier. Like, yeah, I'm sure you can get that pickle jar open by yourself. I believe, and I'm sure you know I can get it open easier. You seeking my help doesn't make you incapable. And if you feel like you seeking help or asking for help speaks to incapability, I think that's more, It's not, that's an internal thing. No, like, that's not a reality. Not that, but like, okay. Like, yeah, you can my, get a chair. I'm but. making <laughs> dinner or noodles for my kids and mm-hmm. we keep the noodles up at the top. Yeah. You're in the room. I'm in the kitchen. If I pull up a chair and get the noodles, that isn't me being super independent. That's just me doing something that needs to be done. Yeah, but you've we've talked about this before. Like, it's not just like a, you know, oh, I got it. Like, there's that's a thing. Okay. Are you are you saying it's not? I don't know where this conversation is going. I, <laughs> I, I'm not saying that it's not a thing. That there are not legitimate things that I still do on my own that I could just ask you for help but I don't I also don't like when it's just normal everyday stuff that I'm very capable of doing just because I have a man in the house doesn't mean that I have to go run and get him every time that you I don't need have it. to but if okay yeah <laughs> yeah I don't I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know where I don't know where that was going but I don't know. It just, I'm, it's nowhere I want to okay. fight for. Like, if you don't see it, you don't see it. But what I'm saying is, is there is an independence that is like. So let me ask you this. In our relationship, do you feel like you have space to be independent? Yes. Well, there was no hesitation there? No. Okay. Is there room in your independence to also be supported? Yes. Okay, so that's ultimately without the point I was trying to get to, and I don't know why I was getting, like, blocks there in the way, but, like, there is a, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to turn on the street because I feel like it's taken away from what we're here to talk about and going into, like, me and you stuff that mm-hmm. is probably not relevant to the to the audience or the conversation. So. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> Lead. What, what am I leading? <laughs> I mean, it. I answered the question about what independence looks like for me in our relationship. Like I really just need the freedom to be me and be supported in the things that I want to do that may not, may or may not include you. And like, if I say, Hey, yo, this is something that I want to do. And I don't, I, I don't know if I would ever say, I don't want you to participate, but this is just something like for me, like for you to not feel a way about that. And I think that that's something that people struggle with. Like, if, because we're married, it's like everything that we do, we have to do it together. For me, that's not the case. I realize that there's going to be stuff that you do in life that I have no part of besides being your rib, being your backbone to support you. And if you ask me to do something, I'm there with no hesitation. And that's what I need in return. For sure. For sure. I think that's important. And it's definitely something that I think is important and 
something I hope I can do. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. I hope I do do that for you. I mean, I don't think we've had enough experience like doing things outside of each other yet. So yeah. we have to see when for the sure. book come out. When the book. <laughs> <laughs> Not much pushing you forward. Like, you know what I mean? So let me look like, so this is an example. And I know that you were being funny with this. So it's not. It's not an issue. But when I was like, um, hey, you know, this group of women that I that I kick it with that I know are going to Atlanta in September for the woman thou art loose uh, last thing. And it's for four days. And I really want to go. And you were like four days. Like, what am I supposed to do? Where the kids going to be? Like, how do we if if there were things that came up like that and it's an issue because you feel like. Yo, what am I supposed to do in that time? Because that's that's a real issue. Like, I've seen couples deal with that. Like, mom can't leave because if she does, the house falls apart. Or, you know what I'm saying? Mom can't work. Uh, dad doesn't work. Mom wants mom to work outside the house because he feels like those duties won't get accomplished if she's not there doing them. Mm -hmm. Like I need to feel like if I step away, the household is still going to run in an efficient manner. It don't necessarily have to run like I run it, but it still needs to run in an efficient manner. And if I want to go for four days with my girls, it's not complete chaos or a disruptor to what's going to, how the kids function. Oh, it's definitely going to be chaos, but Lord. it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you see how I get down. You ever seen Miss Doubtfire, the, the dad before he became Miss Doubtfire? That's me. Okay. As okay. long as don't nobody die, I'm okay because I'm going regardless. Anybody going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Might break a limb or something. But we be Hold right. on. I rebuke that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that's what it means to me. Or same, like, if you say, hey, the fellas is going here and I'm going to be gone for three days, like, I'm not going to have a complete meltdown because I think you're cheating or you're going to leave me yeah. or, you know what I'm saying? Babe, my, the single's taking off, babe. They're talking about they want me to jump on tour with Kirk. It's. Couples. I told you if you're going to tour, I'm going to be on tour. Like, <laughs> you're not going to be going for months. I mean, a couple of days, but <laughs> don't get crazy. I got needs now. All right. <laughs> All right. Some other stuff I need is itching. I need you to scratch. You can't be going for no month. Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> but do you feel like that? Do you feel like you have enough independence in our relationship? Yeah. I haven't had enough experience. Nah, yeah, I haven't. Like, there's the biggest thing I think that pulls me away, and it's like always been like just a a me thing is music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, um, and since I fell back from that, getting into the podcasting um, during COVID, like I, I haven't really been back in the swing like I usually am. I haven't seen that yet, and I'd be interested to see how that looks for us. Yeah, I think with the music thing, for sure, we have to come up. I mean, with both things, whatever it is that I do or what you do, um, we have to come up with something that's acceptable for the both of us. Like, we we do date nights, so I would never want to schedule anything that I'm doing on a date night. Same as you. Like, I don't expect you to be in a studio when we've already said Tuesdays or whatever, is our date night. I also don't want to feel like I'm competing with anything that you're doing. So, you know, if it takes up the majority of your time, cool, but there are still ways that you make your spouse feel loved and appreciated and seen while you're doing that. Yeah. To me, nothing's more important than our relationship. I mean, God, but the stuff that we do, nothing's more important than our relationship. So, if I feel like things are coming before us, then it could be an issue. And that's with anything. Like if you're just like, I got her, we're married now. I can go do everything that I want to do in life. And I don't have to tend to this relationship. That's false. That's when I have a problem. What does tend the relationship look like to you? I, it means maintaining us. Like, so we, we have, like I said, date night, talking, laying with each other at night cuddling you know the things that we do having fun laughing with each other if those things don't become a priority for you anymore and it's just i gotta work yeah like what about people who's like careers and stuff like make it hard to maintain date nights and cuddling every night like 
they like you, we don't have Martin Luther King if Coretta Scott isn't like just being real trill. We don't have we don't have any great people unless there's like exceptionally like great people that are with them and like being malleable. You know what I mean? Because Martin was he ain't, Martin was getting locked up. He wasn't that date nights. I'm sure he wasn't cuddling every night because he was all over. I the mean, world. I'm sure there are insinuating extenuating, extenuating circumstances to all of that. But in that situation, I don't know. Me being a woman, I don't see a space where I feel like being that rock for you if you ain't doing nothing for me. So mm. you you can be the biggest man in the world, Barack Obama, LeBron James, whatever. They still make time for their women. How you know like, that? You see it. <laughs> well, I don't know what they do. You see it. You see it. LeBron is gone months on end, but you still see him and Savannah on vacation. You still see them having date nights. You still see them cuddling in the bed. They post it on IG. Like, you see it. I don't, I don't, I don't see a successful you if I'm completely neglected. Absolutely not. So that's well, what I'm. That's, that's, finish that. Well, there's a lot of successful <laughs> men who don't. Have, there's finish a lot of successful that. men who don't have no women in their corner. They I, dogs. They cheat on you. everybody. Yeah. Like, I'm talking about you. Oh, I thought we were just talking about in general. No. Men. Oh. <laughs> like I don't. I don't see that. Yeah. And if you, if now this is in general, like. To me, if music or acting or whatever is your number one priority, then just don't be married or don't be in a relationship. But like if I if I don't feel like I'm your number one priority, not saying you have to be spending all of your time with me, not saying that you can't do anything without me, but you still have to maintain the relationship with me. Absolutely. You still have to show me that regardless of what you have going on in life, Look, you're my priority. And if something comes in the way of that, you have to be willing to adjust. Absolutely. It's just about that balance. Like, I think what you said is key is like, regardless of what you have going on, your work schedule, life stuff, anything that you're involved in, right? I think it's easier for the person that you're with when they still feel like they're important and they like the relationship is being tended to. And I'm sure that the more you get involved with things like that might look different. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like how you're supportive in one season might not be the way that you tend to the relationship in another. But the main point of it all is that the person feels loved and feels tended to, but that's key. I think that's really key. Yeah, I and I know you said like there are many successful men, but like, are you really? You can might be like financially successful, but can you really say your success in one area and a failure in the most important? Like, if you if you have a family and you're a failure there, I don't care how much success you have in business, like you're not a success. If your children are in the streets and running the you know, running amok and the mom is stressed out and on pain medications and drinking herself just to numb the feeling of not having her husband around. Like you're not a success. I'm sorry. You just have a lot of money. That's not a success. Mm. <laughs> and you'll never be successful in life. If your family is unsuccessful, if we fall apart and you got hit records, something wrong. Something's really well, I mean, wrong. You can be successful in an area and failing in another. You know what I mean? I, I, but I mean, I, I get what the point you're trying <laughs> to say is. It's like, like there's only so much you can get from being successful in one thing. Like fulfillment comes from your, like where your values meet your success. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you can't be fulfilled in being successful if it's not attached to the things that you actually care about. And it's like stuff that's so temporary, right? Like yeah. we put our time and energy into stuff that really don't matter. Like, but if you're coming, you're coming home and your home is in shambles, like, but you, but you're, you got a lot of money in the bank. I just don't see that as a success. That's me personally. Yeah. I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily talk about money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just talking about like, just, but that's what people equate with success nowadays. Yeah, nah, that's not what I was talking about. But I mean, everybody is driven by like 
something they deem as like their mission, their purpose. And you know what I mean? I heard, I heard TD Jakes go on a long tangent about this. And he was saying like, essentially he was saying like great men, they not around like that. I'm going to play it for you. I'm going to play it for you so you can hear it because I don't want to mix it up. But it was the point he was saying, he was like, like I, I don't get to be who I am and move how I'm supposed to move on the side if it's not for like, you know, my, and I'm sure like TD Jakes finds a way around that. Like I said, it looks different in that season. Like how I'm able to be attentive to my family probably isn't the way that somebody like Kirk Franklin or whoever, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and who knows, like success, a lot of people who attain it, they equate that to a curse in a lot of times because, you know, it's hard. It's hard to maintain that stuff. But ultimately, like, the point is, is, like, balancing your purpose, your mission, and not losing sight of your first mission, which is your family. You know what I mean? Like, that's the key to it. Like, before you're anything, you're called to your family. You know what I mean? Before you're called to any aspiration, any career, anything God put on your heart, your family's first, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I can't remember what the scripture is, but he said, how can a man rule something if he can't rule his own house? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think that that's, that's real key. Yeah, and to me, like, we purpose to me, purpose is tied to God, number one. So I don't believe that God will give you any type of purpose that pulls you away from your family. Like, He's giving you the means and to make it all work. And sometimes people choose to just focus on the the act, the work, the part, and let that part f- fail. But, like, God, if you believe God gave you your purpose, you believe he gave you your family, like, you got to balance that. You got to make that work. You can't just neglect one and be like, oh, this is my purpose in life, so my family just got to what? Suffer? Absolutely. Nah. So, to me, it's important that you... F- reach every goal that you have but i also always don't i don't ever want to feel like we compete with that yeah nah i don't i don't i know my values you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i know what's important to me so i worry about that like i worry about the things that i care about maintaining that like if there was an area that i found a lot of success like the things that i really am I'm passionate about. Yeah. There are things that like pull you a lot of different places, a lot of different directions. So for somebody like me, who my context is, there never was a sporting event that my parents weren't there Mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I look up, I I heard, if I had to look up, I heard my mom in the stands. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My dad, I remember Mm -hmm. seeing him. So that's my context. So me having to wrestle with like, Oh man, I got this. I got that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, LeBron's son is an amazing athlete, and I wonder how he feels like. Man, he can't be at every game. Mm-hmm. They they basketball seasons at the same time. You know but what I mean? I think he, I don't know, but I I do believe that like you have to create that that relationship inside of your home. So like for sure, you see picture or videos of LeBron at Bronny's games. He might not be at everyone, yeah. but that one he at. Oh, he's showing out for his son. Yeah. And I think those are the things that matter. Like you understand, you explain to your kids, your lifestyle and your wife, and you know, we all come to an understanding, but because we've spent the time to work on our relationship, mm-hmm. when life happens and it does pull you away, it's not a threat to the relationship that we've already built. Yeah. And that's the part that I believe that we lose is like we feel like because this is my spouse they have to be there and now I can take the time and shift and focus on these things and because this person loves me they just gonna be there nah like you still gotta maintain that you still gotta work on that and if you only have one day a week where you used to have five that one day a week gotta really count yeah it's just, it would just be difficult for me I know me you saw how it was when I accidentally missed Cinco's. My son's, mm-hmm. uh, he had an open house. He's going to middle school next year. It's a different school. He's been in the same school for five grades. <laughs> you know. So now 
He's about to go to middle school, and he had a little open house. They went there, and I forgot about it. And I was so upset at myself, like, oh, my God, how did I do that? I can only imagine the guilt I would feel, like, off being somewhere and being something for somebody else and absent in the area of my family's life. Like, I would really wrestle with that. Anyway, we done went off on a whole tangent about something that I'm not even sure is related <laughs> to what we're actually here to talk about, which is relational independence. That's uh, what we're here to talk about. Yeah, key factor is, it's for me, I can't speak for nobody else, it is important for me to still feel like I have some individuality inside of our relationship. Yeah. I don't want to get so enthralled and so lost in us that I lose me. Yeah. So if it's branching off and doing my own thing for a season, if it's just really diving, making sure I have time to spend time with my girls or get a massage or whatever, where I'm by myself and I get to just be me and not mom and not wife and you know, all of that. I need that. I for in order for me to be whole and happy, I need to have that. And um, I, I'm not there yet. Like, I don't have that yet. And mm -hmm. I'm coming from a season where that wasn't even a possibility. Yeah. So for us, I think we have to have a conversation about what that looks like for each of us when we go to branch off and do our own thing. Because, again, I don't I can't get lost in this relationship. Yeah, we both don't have that yet. Right, we both don't have that yet. And I, I remember keep what asking like, "What do you, what are you about to do?" And the season's about to end. What do, you, what are you about to do? You got any ideas? Like, what's going on with this? What's going on with that? Because I'm curious about that. You know what I mean? And I think we're at a place now where, um, it's become more of a need, right? Mm -hmm. Like when we're dating and you know we see each other on certain days, and you know we were just texting about how we remembered when. You know, I was working two jobs and you were momming and working. Mm -hmm. and you had your business as well. Um, you know, we saw each other once or twice a week. I remember being frustrated about that. But now we're at a point where, nah, like we've settled into a life together. We've got a flow. And now that we're settled into it, we're starting to see the areas where, huh, like what are the things outside of this relationship that, you know, we've kind of like let go of, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it's easy to get like when you f when you feel like all that eu euphoric feeling of like new love, new relationship, new presence, new personality, like it's kind of it catches you up. And the more it's healthy and the more it feels good to you and the more it's something that you actually desire to be around, the easier it is to get lost in. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think I'm still at that point point though I, i'm not craving that yet yeah i'm not craving finding something that's just me i know that it's a need of mine and i know that at some point i'm i need to explore yeah you know outside of just us but i'm not at that point where I, it's a it's like oh, I, I need it i gotta go i gotta figure out what i'm about to do i'm mm. not there yet I, feel you. I know you have you know some things in the in the pipeline that you're waiting on and you're working on the only thing I feel that for is music, yeah. and I don't think it has anything to do with this relationship. I yeah. think it's just, just a, passion a huge it. passion of mine mm -hmm. that it's something that, for a lot of reasons, first it was depression, first it was confusion, <laughs> and <laughs> then it was healthiness. Like you know, the more I started going on this journey of like working on me and you know emotional health and all that stuff, and in our relationship, like it just wasn't as important to me in that season mm -hmm. but once again like now that i'm getting settled into it and i'm going back listening to stuff that i did a couple years ago my like, god oh, this was so like i was good like i'm good at this yo like i forgot you know what I'm saying like so i i just yeah i'm starting to get that itch again you know what i mean yeah and that that's something you said that i forgot like i don't ever like that's a dangerous place to be. You already there. I haven't forgot. I just don't. You forgot how to bake. The I other day you asked me, you said, babe, when do I put the vanilla in? And I'm what? Like, you a lie. <laughs> <laughs> you a whole lie. You be making up stuff. <laughs> you a whole lot. But no, seriously, that's a dangerous place to be in when you forget what makes you you. And you only are familiar with how you function inside of a, rela of a relationship. I don't ever. That's, that wasn't what I was. I'm not. 
Oh my goodness. I didn't say that's what you were saying. I was saying that when you say like, I forgot how much I enjoyed it or how, or, you know, I forgot how much of a passion it was for you. Yeah. There are, that's the, that's the beginning, but you can go really deep into that where you, the things that you really truly enjoy in life, like, You've had to push to the wayside to be a parent, to be a spouse, to be a caretaker or whatever it is. And you're so enthralled in that that you forget that that was even a part of you. And then you have something that sparks it and it feels so far off. Like, because I'm so deep in this, there's no way I can break from that and attain that. Absolutely. I want you to still feel like at any point, if you want to go write a country album, you got the space to do that. Probably won't do that, but I, it's an example. <laughs> I know what you mean. Sure. And at any time, if I you say, "Hey, you want to go be a motivational speaker? Go pursue that," and yeah. we will still be good. Yeah, it's important to me. It's really important to me. A hundred percent. Yeah, like I love this relationship, but I feel this big push that there's certain things that we got to accomplish. Some together, some things that like, and I don't know if. I'm about to turn on the street. I ain't got nothing to do with this again. I'm not doing it. But, like, we've talked about, like, our goals and stuff we want to accomplish. And I'm starting to feel like that. Like, yo, we got to we gotta get this thing rolling. <laughs> we got to get this thing going. Like, <laughs> how old am I? A timeline. Yeah. You, you feel your, your, it's not a biological clock, but you feel your, your clock ticking? Yeah. You running out of time? Not running out of time. I just know that the stuff that we're trying to do, it takes time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It takes time. It takes energy. And as time goes on in this life, energy fades. I have a question. Know? So we've talked a lot about, you know, the things that we aspire to do that we've aspired to do before our relationship that, you know, still in inside of the relationship, we want to have the freedom to do. But at what point, do does that stuff need to shift or do you need to let go of some stuff or is that never a point like if individually we had these dreams goals and aspirations but now we're together and those things may not line up where where we are as a couple this do you now have to let go of the things that you once wanted and now focus solely on where you're going forward and maybe you know that transitions to your relationship have goals, but you still have goals individually, but that are now different because those things that you wanted to do before aren't, are no longer feasible. What are you asking me? Like, when do we do that? Like, no, is it like, that's a real point, right? That's a, that's an adjustment that you have to make. So let's just say I wanted to be a dancer and everything that I've been working up to and to the point of us getting in a relationship was like, I want to be a dancer, but now we're in a relationship and me going to Alvin Ailey and living there and being on Broadway is no longer feasible. How do you manage that? How do you manage letting go of the aspirations and I think pivoting? it just depends on your family, what you're doing, and the people in that relationship. Because there are people with families that do do those things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So um, if we came into a relationship and I knew this was a passion of yours... I would try my hardest to support that because I know it's a passion of yours. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not going to be the one that makes you drop your, <laughs> your dream. <laughs> like what you got to just go to Alvin Ailey. You going, you going to, you're like, you're putting on your own production. What? No, like I'll take care of these kids. <laughs> like my mama go help me. I might, I might move her in on this guest bedroom or something, but now we're going to make a shake. You know what I mean? Like, of course, there are things that are outside of our control, mm -hmm. but um, barring life stuff, life is malleable. You know what I mean? And unless you're coming in with like a idea of what something's supposed to look like, and, but there's almost always a way to make something work. Of course, there's situations that you just can't. Maybe it's financial. You know what I mean? Like in the music world, a lot of people I know that get stuff jumping, 
I got a homie that moved to Atlanta and was just living out the car. He'd spend some nights in the studio. He'd be with Jazzy Faye, stay at Esker for a couple of days, and then he'll bounce over here. And that life works because it's just him. Right. Now, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I've got kids. If I'm going to Atlanta, I'm there for a couple of days, and I've already got situations lined up. I'm not just going out there on a whim, hoping to make some shake. But right. that's how that world works. You know what I mean? That's unrealistic, and I would never drag my family through that. But, you know what I mean, if there was something that was more steady and I have a way to provide for my family by living my dream, as long as it doesn't take away from me being who, I, you know, who I'm supposed to be in my children's life, then yeah i definitely would still do that you know what i mean yeah i guess that's the point that i was trying to get back is the adjustment factor like we're, we're stressing that we have things that we want to do outside of each other but there is still an adjustment that has to be made because we're now married with yeah. children and just because you had a dream prior to that it doesn't mean that you have to let it go but it may look very different and i think that's the important factor you can't be so married to the dream that everything else suffers because of it like i want to be a music artist so all of our free money goes into me being a music artist no extra money go now goes into you being mm -hmm. a music artist and maybe the dream looks different now instead of you being an artist maybe now you're just a writer or maybe you're now just a producer because your life circumstances have changed and i think people oftentimes get into um a tiff in their relationship or conflict in their relationship when the dream looked a certain way and now that your life has changed but your dream hasn't mm you can't manage the two now they seem to be in conflict with one another and if you if i can't be this for myself then i can't be none of this for you and it's so not true like i remember you having a conversation like i i don't care about none of that like if this never happens like i'm good and i was so worried about that i was so worried about you finding so much fulfillment in our relationship that like the things that i know matter to you you were just, you were, I don't know if you were convincing yourself or if it was the truth. I was trying to figure that out in my head. Like, does it really not matter to him? Or is he just saying that because... I think it shifted for me. Yeah. Like, okay. at one point, I did not, I worried about what my life would look like if I didn't make something happen in a specific area. Mm -hmm. Like, my happiness was dependent on the, like, I, the people in my life knew that. My job, the, pe the people I worked with knew that. Like, my, especially when I when I lost my like spiritual side, mm -hmm. when I wasn't tending to that, I clung to my musical gift. Like that was the one thing that gave me like real fulfillment. Um, of course, nothing can replace that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But it was the closest thing I had to it, to it. So if I wasn't in the studio, if I went a month without being in the studio, working on music, it, it affected me emotionally. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when I said that, I think that was me coming to a point, not just through our relationship, but like through me, you know, coming back to God was that, man, I don't need this. You know what I mean? Like, it's still something I feel like God gave me a desire to do, mm -hmm. but my happiness and my joy isn't contingent on me being something in mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? At this point, it's about being fulfilled. You know what I mean? And I'm fulfilled doing the things that God placed on my heart to do and the things that God gave me a gift to do. But my joy and my happiness isn't contingent upon that. You know mm. what I mean? So that's what I was trying to express. Not okay. like, you know, oh, I've got you. I don't even care about my dreams anymore. <laughs> like that. I, I wasn't that dramatic. Well, but I did <laughs> worry that, you know what I'm saying, because you had found peace in, in our relationship, you know, that the things that really matter to you, you were trying to convince yourself that they didn't matter anymore. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God, like, I don't want to be the blame for, you know, because I was so invested in you and I spent so much time with you that I let go of this dream mm. and now it can never happen again. Yeah. I was worried about that. So I'm for glad sure. to hear that that's not what it was. For sure. Yeah. And I remember during that time, like, getting prophesied to, like... Mm -hmm. Like you convince yourself like this is not what guys we know. Like this is still for you. Mm -hmm. Like 
stuff that I ain't told nobody. It's just like in my heart and somebody ain't coming speaking directly to that telling me, no, you're still going to do music. I'm like, huh? How do you know? Okay. All right. All right, God, I hear you. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I be tripping. Like, how y'all don't believe, like, y'all ain't been in the services I've been in. Because <laughs> the stuff I see, there ain't no way that, you know, ain't no God ain't focus. real. <laughs> <laughs> I know he real. I done seen some stuff. So, yeah. What Pastor say? You got proof. I got proof. <laughs> I got a whole lot of proof. You know what I mean? But um, I think it's just that balance, right? Finding that balance between the stuff that you love outside of the house and balancing that with what's really important and what's mostly important is everything that's inside the house. So you can't get caught up in so much of any one thing that you lose sight of the other, right? You get so caught up in your endeavors outside the house that you lose sight of this, or you get so caught up in what's happening inside the house that you lose sight of the things that you really love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. One of the exercises we did at the marriage ministry was where we had to write down just our personal interests and we were supposed to do an activity. We didn't get to do it where we find mutual things on our list right. to do together. Now, there's stuff on my list that I know I love to do that. I would never, like, I'm not going to ask her to play ping pong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, or some of the other stuff that's on my list. But, you know, there's things that we mutually enjoy to do to enjoy doing together. You know what I mean? So it's that healthy balance of staying connected even while you're doing things you know what I mean? Yeah. And that don't being each other's significant other. Yeah, and being each other's cheerleader. Yes. You know what I mean? And um I think men are used to women playing that role, but fellas, like we gotta be that too. Yeah. We gotta be that too. I be trying. She won't give me no she that bakes is, hoodie. <laughs> she won't let me get no she bake shirt. I've been trying to get she's like, My color is this pink. I want I don't care. I want a pink one. Support looks different for everybody. <laughs> and you she support me in other ways that I don't need you to be I want the shirt in the kitchen. <laughs> you can't control my support. <laughs> I don't even need to be in the kitchen. Look, you saw me, I don't care nothing about no baked goodies, but she got an event. Like I'm gonna be right there. I don't care if I'm off of work, I'm tired, I'd rather go home and sit down. I'm here right here. Hey, did best cookie in the city thanks for coming and i i asked you to come to that so that's what i'm saying like support yeah. looks different for everybody for, for sure. me like i just need to know that when i call on you you're gonna be there absolutely every time every time and i'm gonna be there when you don't call on me mm. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> and that's the problem it's the times no, i want to be there problem. With you. no because i love that i love when you just show up uh, without look. being asked yeah my nah. thing is i just don't need you to help me bake it but everything you else hating on my skills i'm gonna go on a whole baking venture when i'm gonna pop up on you with some good some baking. Right, then the next time we go in the studio i'm gonna tell you how to mix the record and how to tell somebody what, what no nothing would be more attractive <laughs> Yo, maybe you should bring up the bass here. <laughs> I'm like, and try she need to turn up her falsetto. Yo, try panning <laughs> your left to your right. Yep, I'm gonna be doing all that. <laughs> or put the second track, pan it to the middle. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, stack that, stack that. She, she didn't do that again. <laughs> you see, she learned in the lingo. All the studio has here, like, what she know about stacks? <laughs> and I want you to tell me how it feels. I look, nothing would make me more excited. Lies. <laughs> it's a mutual interest. Like, you know that's a big thing for men, like mutual But if I don't know what I'm talking about, it just it's it's frustrating. Oh yeah, if you don't know what you're talking about, exactly. I'm like, all right, sit down, be quiet. Exactly. <laughs> but what if you but what if you I know what I'm talking about? But you don't when it comes to making. But I'm gonna learn. Mm. And so if you're telling me <laughs> I brought you a piece of cheese, oh that's good made up. Like I did. You wouldn't see. I wouldn't believe you, <laughs> huh? But once you find out that I did, you'd be like, "You don't know how to do no cheese. <laughs> Why couldn't you be happy for me? See, look, I can't be on your territory. You could be on mine, though. Mm -mm. I welcome you. We gonna test this out, y'all. Test it Stay out. Tuned. I keep trying to push you out there. How many times have I said? I want you to do something in the studio. How hyped do I get when you do anything musical? You the rap you wrote. What, who was the biggest fan of that? You, A. Eh? You're the only one who heard it also. Oh, my God. <laughs> and look, wow. and I'm trying to push her out. Like, oh, my God. They think it's a whole skill set you have that people don't even know. The other day, we was playing around. I, only, I was making up some song in there. And you took it over and did like a whole little eight bar count. I don't even remember what it was. But I remember being like, oh, I wanted to dislike it. I couldn't. It was so dope. She's really good. He's just a fan, yeah. I'm a super fan. You're so creative. <laughs> You're so creative. It's wild. 
It's wild. But yeah, listen, I don't know if this is like, I don't know if this is an area that everybody struggles with and it doesn't look the same for everybody. And I think we kind of like focused on how it relates to our relationship, but it might look different for y'all relationship for y'all relationship. It could just look like, man, he really enjoys playing video games with his friends. Right. And he's having a hard time balancing that space which is relaxing for him he enjoys it he gets fulfillment out of like that time but i'm feeling neglected or i really enjoy going out with my homegirls i'm cool with my best friend like we have a very specific relationship that i really enjoy but i don't know how to balance that out with you know what i mean maintaining my maintaining relationship. my relationship with my manner like it's it's a struggle that it looks different for everybody, but it's something that a lot of people deal with. Balancing outside the relationship with inside the relationship. It requires a certain level of maturity. And? <laughs> and compromise. Communi- and and com- communication. Communication. Literally talking through it like, hey, in, I, this is like, if there was a theme <laughs> or a, like, a theme that kind of was woven through everything Maybe. we talk about you is talk about it. conversation and di- especially difficult conversations right the stuff that like because ultimately like i i want you to be happy doing this like if something makes you happy like most of us like we want that for you Mm -hmm. we just don't want it to encroach upon our needs yes and that's where the issue comes from so it's having that conversation of like hey look and ultimately when you start talking about the stakes are already high because i know something you care about yeah it's like i'm okay with you going with your girls there was ten- y'all don't even know i don't even <laughs> know if y'all can feel it but there was tension every time she was talking about music stuff i'm like i don't know what she's gonna do when i become the new kirk franklin <laughs> it's gonna be an issue we just it's just waiting because it's something that we care about when it's something that we care about it raises the tension and the stakes are higher right so anytime you encroach on that like it makes the situation and the conversation a little bit more difficult, but it has to be had. But it only gets more difficult if you don't talk about it. Absolutely. Like, if you just sitting there and letting it fester and she's continuing to spend more time with her friends and you sitting at home like, she ain't back yet. Absolutely. She ain't came in here and hugged me and kissed me and nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All she doing is talking on the phone to Sarah. Like, yeah. it's an issue. If you, and if you don't say anything, she don't never know that nothing's wrong. Absolutely. And but most of the time, you get so frustrated that by the time you do say it, because you've let it be pent up for so long, it doesn't yeah. come out in a way that it can be heard. Yeah. It comes out in a way that's going to start an argument rather than a discussion. Exactly. You know what I mean? I saw a post the other day. Someone typed, I don't know. Um, if anybody feels like this, and I don't care what you feel about this, but I hate when men play video games. I think it's the dumbest thing for a grown man to sit and play video games. And the number of women in that comment section were just like, oh, my God, thank you. But most of the time, that has now taken over, and that's why she feels like that. Absolutely. But if she could have voiced earlier, like, hey, you're going a little farther than not liking your video mm-hmm. games. Can you pull it back a little bit? I believe most men are willing to be like, all right, I hear you. Like, I only do it. Let, let me label out some times here that I'm just free to go play on my video game and I don't need no interruption. And if you can give him that, mm-hmm. most men will give you what you need. In and the ones that don't. You don't want to be with You him. don't want to be with him. <laughs> I was like, yo, forget what you're talking about. I get off of work at six. I'm on this game when as soon as I get home. And it's that's okay. And I'm gonna be on until midnight. That's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> I don't care what you say. This is what it is. It's gotta be like it could be like, hey, look, I know this is how you like to unwind after work. Yeah. I'm good with that. If you could like just give me some time, I don't know, like have a time that you know you good. I know you'll be off the game so we can spend some time together. That would be great. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's those type of conversations that need to be had. But most of the time, when we encro- when people encroach upon the stuff that we care about, we sometimes it's selfish. You know what yeah. I mean? Like we inherently guard the stuff that we care about. But there's nothing that's more selfless than like legitimate true love. Yeah. And when you encroach on that, you have to find compromise. You got to find those areas where like. Yeah, I'd love to just be in the studio every day till four o'clock in the morning. Like those were my heydays. Those were like some of the days I was like, oh, I love this. But you wouldn't have a wife. 
Nah, and I wouldn't do none of the fun stuff that happens before four o'clock in the morning. Amen. Right? So come on, compromise. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, I'm glad we was able to have this conversation. Um, crazy thing is this was on our topic list for a grip. And I don't know why we was tap dancing around this. We kept skipping over, like we ain't got nothing to talk about. Whole time. You you thought about this genius a while ago. Yeah, you, this valuable conversation. Be honest, you was not open to it. I don't know what I'm supposed to talk it, about. Well, it was a perspective <laughs> I didn't see. That I knew this was something that was close to you, but I didn't know what I was gonna weigh in with the conversation. I just didn't know how to participate. Like whole time, the thing I was thinking about information. Whole time when we were talking about, I'm like, you talking about when you like get on top of chairs and try to get the ramen noodles off the top of the shelf? Like, <laughs> like wow, well, I'm gonna talk about that for an episode. <laughs> get it? Get the noodles. Do your thing. Okay. Fall down, break your neck. I don't care. I'm gonna sit right here on this couch. Ooh, so dramatic. <laughs> we have to go have a conversation about that. Just so y'all know, we gonna clear this. We gonna clear you this gonna be talking right to now. yourself. I'm nah, not you talking talk about to me. that. You gonna talk to me? I ain't doing it. <laughs> nah, but um, yeah. Once again, uh, last episode next week. Um, go to the post. Go to our page. Wherever you find us at. Hit us with some questions, some topics. Something. Or, oh, sorry. No, go for I it. I'm going to say, or you see something while you scroll in Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, tag us in it. If it's interesting, we'll talk about it live on the air. We'll give you all our perspective. Absolutely. And we will actually be live while we're recording episode 13. We will be live. So if there ever was a um, live to join either YouTube or Facebook, this is the one because it's actually going to be airing on all streaming platforms. It's going to be on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere if they post podcasts. At. <laughs> so. If you want to get your voice heard, hear your question heard, get you a shout out, this is the one to do that on. So uh, we can't wait. I'm excited about it. This genius over here thought about this format. Um, so it's going to be dope. Can't wait. It's going to be amazing. Until then, you can show your love and support by hitting us up on our cash app, dollar sign, what they never told us. Whoop. And we promise to be back next season next season whenever that is whenever the mood <laughs> strikes <laughs> bigger and better than this season always and we do that with the love that you show via cash app um a lot of stuff you see here the difference between first season and second season uh yes it was an investment on our part but a lot of this could not have been done without the support of our family y'all who have just poured into our lives in ways that Absolutely. you know we can't even talk about and it's good to know that we're also pouring into your life you mm -hmm. know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's an amazing film we were just talking about that like it's crazy that people even care about what we got to say <laughs> who are we <laughs> who are we no but um we're nothing without y'all and we thank you guys for that we thank you for the way y'all support this platform and as long as y'all rock with us we're gonna keep it going Absolutely. Right. So always remember, we love love. Y'all should love love too. Peace. Peace.